In this uh, video, I'd like to go over some of the vocabulary we're going to use when we talk about polynomials um, to refer to specific parts of expressions or equations. Okay, so um, when we look at a polynomial, poly means um, many, right? So um, polynomials consist of a bunch of um, expressions added together or subtracted from each other, okay? Um, so like for example here we have some examples. Here there's only one thing that's added or subtracted and here there's two, right? But they're both polynomials because polynomials include any length um, of expression like this, okay? And um, when we talk about different parts of the polynomial, usually we divide it by the things that are added together. So for example here, there's one thing that's added or subtracted together. We call that a term. Here there's two things that are added or subtracted together. Those are called um, terms, okay? So here there's one term and here there's two terms, right? Here there's two terms. Inside one term you can see that there's uh, things that are multiplied together but there's nothing that's added or subtracted. Once you add or subtract, then you've created two terms instead of one. Okay? So uh, that's our first uh, vocabulary, which is the word term. Uh, the next vocabulary is degree. Degree is um, how many, uh, or what's the exponent that you're taking the largest term to. And when I say the, lar the largest degree term, so like for example, here we just have one term and we look at the variable in the term and it's u and if we look at its exponent u doesn't have an exponent actually that kind of means that u is to the the an exponent of one right because an exponent of one just means multiply u one time which is what's happening here so the degree here is one here the exponent is two so obviously the degree, degree is two even though there's another term here that the degree is one we always take the highest uh, the highest term, or the highest uh, degree, to use the degree for the polynomial. So for this polynomial, the degree is 2, even though there's a, this uh, term here, which has a degree of 1. Okay, so this polynomial's degree is 2. This polynomial is degree 3, because this is the highest order degree here. And here, even though there's a degree 4 here and a degree 1 here, we consider the polynomial to be degree 4 because that is the highest order uh, term. Um, down here, you can see a really weird one here. It's got two different variables in it. The way you calculate the degree of this expression is you add together the exponents for everything that's multiplied together in terms of variables. So here there's 4 and 4, so we're, we're going to say that the degree of this one is 8. Okay, so now we've talked about degree. Uh, let's talk about monomial, binomial, and trinomial. Okay, a monomial just means that there's one term, so this is a monomial. A binomial means that, it means that there's two terms, so here's a binomial, here's a binomial, here's a binomial. And trinomial means that there's three terms which this is a trinomial. It's got three groups of variables and numbers added or subtracted together. Okay? Um, and of course, polynomial means uh, all three. And you can have larger uh, polynomials that uh, have more than three terms, but you don't need to know the names of those. Okay? Uh, finally, when we talk about the degree, another way we can talk about the degree of a polynomial is kind of a nickname cubic, linear, and quadratic, okay? Linear you're familiar with, right? Linear means it can be written as y equals mx plus b, um, like a line, okay? So when you have a linear equation, you have a variable with an exponent of 1 or no exponent, multiply times a number, and maybe that number is 1, okay? But basically a linear equation, so it has uh, a, as the highest order term, it will have the variable to an exponent of 1. And there's maybe there might be something added to it that's just a number, like plus 5 or something like that, which is called a constant term. Okay? And so this will be linear. Quadratic would be uh, the next order, which would be uh, uh, exponent of 2. Okay? We've done those, right, in, uh, in the previous chapter. And so if you have a variable 
squared, and that's the highest order term, then that would be, or the highest degree term, that would be a quadratic polynomial, okay? And finally, uh, cubic. So cubic would be when you have the highest degree in the uh, polynomial is 3, okay? So that makes sense, right? Uh, when you take the cube uh, of a variable, it is taken to the third power, so that's why it's cubic, okay? For the fourth root, they are the fourth uh, degree exponent. We call that quartic, but you don't need to know that term, okay? So you just know mo uh, uh, linear, quadratic, and cubic. And that's what you need to know to do uh, the next two um, axioms. This is an explanation of how to add and subtract uh, polynomials, okay? So sometimes when they ask you to add uh, two polynomials, they'll put them um, in an expression like this with an addition or subtraction in between and parentheses around each one, okay? And uh, the important thing here is to remember that you're combining like terms. Uh, I think it's easier if you arrange them horizontally. So you put like the 2n plus 6 on the top, okay? And then you put 3n cubed plus 3n squared plus n plus 2 on the bottom, like that. And you see I've lined up uh, the number terms on top of each other. I've lined up the n terms on top of each other, the n squareds, and the n cubes. Of course, there's no n squared term in the first polynomial. There's no n cubed term in the first polynomial, so I put them underneath blank spaces here just to hold the space, just kind of like when we do when we add numbers that uh, are bigger than the other. Okay, so we're lining up um, the polynomials by the degree of the variable. Okay, and so uh, now when we add them up, we just go uh, through these vertical lines and we add up everything in this vertical line, everything in this vertical line, everything in this vertical line, and everything in this vertical line. Pretty easy, right? All right, now let's do a subtraction problem. Subtraction problems are a little bit uh, more tricky because um, in addition to lining up the expressions, one thing you need to do is be careful to distribute the negative sign. So if I have minus 6x squared plus 1, and 6x squared plus 1 is in parentheses, then I need to take the negative sign, I need to multiply it times the 6x squared, then I need to multiply it times the 1. And so what I end up with is negative 6x squared and negative 1. Since I've distributed the subtraction sign as a negative sign, I don't need to subtract it uh, after I've written it like this. I can just add everything together, right? So I've, do you see how I've lined up the x squareds and I've lined up the number terms, also called the constant term? And there's no x term in this expression, so I've just left a blank here. Now that I've lined them up, then it's pretty easy to do the subtraction. So 9x squared minus 6x squared is 3x squared. 2 minus 1 is 1. And, oh, I have 6x here on top, and I don't have anything here, so the result between 6x plus 0 is 6x. So here is the result of my subtraction.